welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you're new, subscribe, like, and comment all down below. And guys, we, um, I am sorry because, um, I skipped, um, no, I did not skip, but I left a buddy, um, because, um, I had library books. I'm Chewy and Chica. Yeah. Alright, so guys, let's get started with chapter 6. Okay. Lizzie, Lizzie's best friend Maria showed up next. She arrived right in the middle of the puppy food disaster. Wait, let me take get a picture before you clean them up. Maria and Lizzie had taken, talked on the phone about creating posters <clears throat> with a picture of of the puppies they then they could put it all up all over town there had to be at least three people in littleton who wanted puppies it would be great to have new owners all lined up that by the time the puppies were old enough to go to their forever homes, Maria <clears throat> pulled out her digital camera out of her backpack, knelt down, and started to snap pictures after picture flash. What was that bright light? Coco stared up at the new girl. Then she charged straight for her, tumbling over herself in her in eagerness to check things out. She put her nose right up against the new girl's flashy thing that made the new girl squeak. Cinnamon sat down with a thump and started to clean herself the way her mom had just begun to teach her. It wasn't as much fun as licking a person, but the goo, goo all over her legs did taste pretty good. Buddy was still hungry, but he couldn't get to his mom for milk. <clears throat> Not with the scary flashy thing in the room. He tried to hide behind Charles' knee. He knew he would be safe there. Skipple, Skipper got to her feet and wandered over to the dish. The puppies had abandoned she was extra hungry these days since she was nursing this stuff didn't look or smell like her usual food but it was still food so she might just as well eat it she began lapping the dish clean hey skipper that food is for your puppies lizzie said oh well maria sat back on her heels laughing at the puppies wow they they really cute they Wow, they really are cute, she said. You guys are so lucky. They look just like the puppies in so many puppies, tortured Lizzie and Sammy and Charles. They have names now, Lizzie said. She introduced Maria to all the puppies. Coco is the adventurous one who almost put her nose on your camera. Cinnamon is the sweet one who's always trying to kiss you, and Buddy is the shy one behind Charles' leg. I love those names, said Maria. They're perfect. These puppies are perfect. You'll find homes for them in no time. She pulled Cinnamon onto her lap and let the puppies lick her cheek. I'm sure hope you're right, said Mrs. Peterson with a sigh as she wiped puppy food off the front of the bean sweater. Maria pushed the play back button on her camera and showed everybody the pictures she'd taken. The puppies looked adorable but messy. The one of cinnamon licking food off Coco's ear the, was everybody's favorite. It was hilarious. Maybe those aren't the best pictures for our sign. Lizzie said, let's finish cleaning up the pups and try again. By the time the pups were dry and clean, they were also very, very sleepy. That made it easy to pose them inside of Lizzie's school backpack with just their cute little heads and paws poking out. 
Say cheese. No, say puppy chow, said Maria as she snapped away. When they were sure they had some good pictures, Lizzie and Maria put the puppies in the box next to Skipper for a nap. Then the girls headed upstairs and got to work on the poster. Lizzie loved making posters on the computer. First, she and Maria uploaded the puppy pictures. It was hard to choose the cutest one. They were all adorable. Then Lizzie typed a headline that read, We need good homes underneath. She put in all the information she knew about the puppies, their age, their, that there were two girls and a boy, and when they would be ready for adoption. Maybe you should put something about that, what kind of dogs they are, said Maria. They look like their ears stick up. Lizzie glanced up at her dog breeds. They look like they might be part husky or something, the way their ears stick up. Lizzie glanced up at her dog breeds of the world poster husky. She said, I never thought of that, but you might be right for that matter. Their coloring the laughed. She laughed. They could be dogs, just like their mom. Then when the sign was finished, they brought it downstairs to show everybody. Aw, said Mom. Very cute. Looks great, said Dad. If you want to put some up down, I can give you a ride there, and then you can walk back home. I'm headed to the firehouse for a meeting. Charles and Sammy promised to help Mom keep track of the puppies while Lizzie and Maria put up posters and dropped the girls off near the post office. They they headed down the street, stopping in the sh in the shoe store, the dry cleaners, and the bakery. Everybody loved the posters and was happy to put it up, but nobody wanted a puppy. Got three dogs at home already, G grumbled. Got three dogs at home already, grumbled the lady at the shoe store. My son's allergic, said the owner to the dry cleaners. I don't think my cats would appreciate a puppy, said the girl behind the counter at the bakery. Lizzie and Maria put up a poster in each shop. Then they kept walking down the block. Hey, look at this, Maria said, stopping at a bookstore window. This would be the perfect place to put up a poster. Lizzie read the names on the sign. Lucky dog books, she said. There's a there's always been a bookstore here, but that's a new name. New owner too, said a said a very tall white haired man who was putting some books on display table in front of the store. I just sold my bookstore town I uh, my bookstore in New York City, so I can move to a smaller town. I love Littleton already. He smiled at the girls. I'm Jerry Small, he said. I know it's a funny name for someone my size, but I'm stuck with it. Just remember, Jerry Small is tall. Anyway, I what do you have there? Lizzie showed him a poster. Can we put this up in your window, she asked. He took one look and broke into a wide grin. You sure can, he said. Hey, those puppies look kind of familiar. Maybe it because they look like the ones in so many puppies, Maria suggested. That's what everybody says, Lizzie told him. Jerry Small nodded. That's it, he said. Maybe I'll put the book in the window too. too. I'm trying to get to, I'm trying to figure out good way, ways to get people to come into the store. Nobody seems to know I'm here. He scratched his chin. Didn't I hear that Mary Thompson just moved to Littleton? Maybe I, maybe having a book by a local author in the window will help bring my business. He looked at the poster again. Those puppies sure are cute, he said. 
They'll be ready to adopt in a couple of weeks, Maria said with a smile. You want us to save you one, asked Glizzy, hopefully. I'd love to have a puppy, Jerry said. I've always had dogs, in fact. My store is named after the last one, Lucky. He looked sad for a moment. Lucky was the best dog ever. He hung around my bookstore with me, and the customers loved him. <clears throat> Lucky made me laugh every single day. She shook his head and smiled. But right now, I have to concentrate on getting some customers into my store. We went on once. I have enough business. Maybe I can think about adopting a dog. Jerry took the poster and taped it to the window. He promised to show the girls some pictures of Lucky the next time they came to the store. Lizzie and Maria walked around town some more and put up the rest of the posters. When they had taped up the last one, Maria said she had to had she had to head home. So Lizzie walked home alone. As she walked, Lizzie thought about how nobody was beginning to understand why Mrs. Dob. Miss Dobbins was always so upset about all the unwanted puppies and dogs in the world and she she and she was was beginning to see that it was going to be harder than she thought to find homes for three puppies even if they were the three cutest puppies ever chapter 7 when Lizzie got home that afternoon, the house was quiet. She headed into the kitchen and found Mom sitting near the puppy's box. Looking upset, oh, Lizzie, she said, I'm glad you're home. What's the matter? Lizzie asked. I'm really worried about the little boy puppy, Mom said. Buddy, he just doesn't seem right, she said, and she and Lizzie looked into the box. Sure enough, the tan puppy was curled up in a tiny ball, hardly s seeming to notice the way his sisters stepped all over him as they played tug-of-war with Snakey. I think he's shivering, said Lizzie. She had never seen a puppy tremble like that before. Poor buddy, she said. Where's Dad? Where's Charles? Dad's not back yet. And Charles and Sammy just headed to walk. Rufus and Goldie, Mom said, biting her bottom lip. She really looked upset. Mommy, we have Mom, we have to call the vet. Lizzie said, Doctor Gibson will know what to do. Mom nodded seriously. That's exactly what I was thinking. She agreed. I guess I was waiting until Dad got home so we could drive the puppy over to the animal hospital. I don't think we should wait anymore, Lizzie said. Buddy looked really sick. He had hardly moved since she had started watching him. Even though Skipper was nudging him with her nose, the little puppy just lay there, shaking. Buddy could feel his mom touching him, but he just wanted to be left alone. He was so tired. He was hungry too, but he just didn't have the energy to fight his sister over food anymore. Mom called Dr. Gibson and told her all about Skipper and her puppies. Then she explained how Buddy didn't seem to have same the same kind of pep that his sister had sisters had. Lizzie sat watching Buddy while Mom talked. She was worried about him. Dr. Gibson says she'll come right over, Mom reported. When she got off the phone ten minutes later, Dr. Gibson rang the doorbell. Let's see those puppies, she said with a smile. She said with a smile when Lizzie answered the door. Lizzie felt better right away. Oh, look, said Dr. Gibson. 
when she came into the kitchen. Aren't they cute? She squatted down at by the box. I see what you mean. I see what you mean about this little guy. She said. She reached in and very gently picked up Buddy. Up,、uh, she felt him all over and looked in her eyes, mouth, and ears. You'll be okay, sweetie. She said softly as she petted the tiny puppy, pup. But Buddy, whined Skipper, who was down at Doctor Gibson's feet, whimpered too. If it was as if she were saying, "Can you help my baby?" Meanwhile, Coco and Cinnamon romped around Doctor Gibson's sneakers, attacking her shoelaces. It's exactly what I thought," said Doctor Gibson. I think he's just undernourished. That means she went on, and she saw Lizzie's puzzled look. That, that's he. That he's not getting enough to eat. That sometimes happens to his smallest puppy. They call puppies like Buddy the runt of the litter. We've noticed that he gets pushed out of the way a lot. Mom said. So what do we do? Doctor Gibson pulled a small bottle out of her bag. We give him some extra puppy formula, she said. That way, whether her sisters let him eat or not, we make sure he gets enough. She showed Mom and Lizzie how to put a few drops of puppy formula into the fingers, and each buddy to lap, and teach buddy to lap. It up, buddy. Then they slowly guided him toward the tip of the bottle, so that he understood where to get more food. Finally, the doctor asked Lizzie to sit down and hold Buddy on her lap to feed him. Soon, the puppy was sucking away greedily, greedily, with his eyes closed. Lizzie could all, almost see his soft tan belly getting round, rounder. He was sure hungry, she said softly. She stroked the white heart of his chest. I think he perk, he he'll perk up pretty soon, said Doctor Gibson. But you'll need to feed him as often as possible for a few days. That means a bottle every three of. Or for hours. Can you handle it, or would you like me to take him to the animal hospital and care for him there? We can do it, Lizzie said. I set. I'll set my alarm clock and get up in the middle of the night. Oh no, you won't," said Mom. Tomorrow's a school day. I'll stay home for school from school," Lizzie th- said. Mom was shaking her head. I don't think so," she said. Anyway, Mary Thompson is visiting Littleton Elementary tomorrow. Remember, you don't want to miss that. She looked up at Doctor Gibson, but Buddy will be fine. Be fine here, she said. I'll take good care of him. I'm sure you will," said Doctor Gibson. Just call me if, if you have any problems. I'm always happy to help out with foster puppies. They need all the friends they can get. <clears throat> Before she left, she knelt down to pet Skipper, Coco, and Cinnamon. It's a real shame, she said. There are just too many unwanted puppies in the world. It's not easy to find homes for all of them. Doctor Gibson looked at Lizzie. Well, you probably know all about that working at the shelter. Lizzie nodded. Miss Dobbins was a sign up that says that if one dog has puppies and they have puppies and their puppies have puppies, you can end up with、um, almost seventy thousand dogs in seven years. Wow, Mom said, that's a lot of puppies, and puppies grow up into dogs. Said Lizzie, "You should see how much, how many dogs are, there are at Caring Paws right now, and they all need homes." That's right," said 
Dr. Gibson, and any dog that found a home with caring people like you would be a very lucky dog. She patted Skipper one more time and said goodbye, but what, Dr. What? But what Dr. Gibson said made Lizzie think. She was so busy thinking that she forgot to say goodbye back, back. Lucky dog, Lizzie thought, just the, like the name of Jerry Small's bookstore. Bookstore. Lizzie wanted to help more of the dogs. At caring paws, at caring paws, become lucky dogs with families of their own, and she wanted to help Jerry Small get people to come to his store. If he had more business, he might even adopt one of the the puppies. Jerry was such a nice man, and the bookstore would be a great home for a puppy. Lizzie was beginning to get an idea of how to help the dogs at Caring Paws, Skipper, Skipper's Puppies, and Jerry's at all the same time. Chapter 8. Buddy still looks kind of weak, Charles said the next morning at be breakfast. Maybe Lizzie and I should stay home for from school and help take care of him. He looked over at the little tan puppy with his soft brown eyes. Charles could almost feel Buddy be begging for Charles and Lizzie to stay home. Cinnamon and Coco were fine on their own, but Buddy needed them. Charles waited for Lizzie to say something, but she was just staring into her cereal bowl deep in thought. Sammy, who was finishing off his second piece of toast, Instantly agreed. I'll help too, he said. Sammy also loved Buddy. Plus, he he was always happy to skip school for a day. Thanks for the offer, said Mrs. Peterson. But the bean, I can take. But the bean and I can take care of Buddy just fine. I fed him twice in the middle of the night. He's already looking much better. She looked down at the tan puppy. Aren't you? Mr. Buddy, she asked in a baby talk voice. Aren't you, Mr. Buddy, she asked in a baby talk voice. He reached up a paw when he heard his name. And Mom bent down to kiss him on the head. Buddy loved this lady. She loved him too. He could tell he felt at home in her lap. It was almost as good as being curled up with his mother. He snuffled into her cheek when she kissed him. Mom giggled. She exactly she actually giggled. Charles looked over at Lizzie and raised his, his eyebrows, but Lizzie didn't seem to notice. Charles had never seen their mother act quite like that around the puppy, but Buddy could melt anybody's heart. There was just someone special, special about him. Buddy, yelled the bean. Buddy, yelled the bean. He reached up to touch the puppy. Hey, cool, the bean knows Buddy's name already, said Charles. That was the first time the bean had called any puppies by its real name. Usually, he said, Uppy. Easy, Mom cautioned the bean. That's good, she said when the bean gave, gave, um, that's good, said when the bean gave Buddy a soft pat on the nose. That's the way to pat a puppy. Pat me, the buddy, the, the bean demanded. He toddled over to Charles and Bumped his head against Charles' knee. Charles patted his hand gently. Good bean, he said. That's a good bean. That's a good bean, the bean laughed. And went around the table greeting, getting pats. Pretending to be a dog was his favorite game 
After breakfast, Charles, Lizzie and Sammy gave the bean and the puppies a few last pats and headed off to go to school. What's up with you? Charles asked his sister. You're like out of it. Just thinking, Lizzie said. I'm working on an idea. Then she started talking so fast that Charles could barely keep up. See, I'm thinking about all the dogs at Caring Paws and how they all need homes and how our puppies are going to need homes too. We need to get the word out. Lizzie swung her book bag as she talked getting more and more excited and I was also thinking about that new books it's called lucky dog books and the owner is really nice his name is Jerry Small and he loves dog books if he gets enough business he might even adopt one of the puppies but he needs people to know his store is there. Charles and Sammy looked at each other. What was Lizzie getting at? So what I'm thinking is this, Lizzie continued. What if there was a big grand opening party at the bookstore and we invited all the dogs from the shelter? People would come to the bookstore for the party. But they would also get to meet the dogs and Skipper's puppies too. And maybe some of them would get adopted. They would be lucky dogs. All right. Charles and Sammy were nodding. It's a great idea, Charles said. It'll work. be a lot of work, Lizzie warned. First, I have to talk to Miss Dobbins and Mr. Small, said Lizzie. Maybe Maria and I can make cookies and punch. She swung her backpack some more, but how can we make sure that that lots and lots of people come to the store? All the way to school, Lizzie kept talking and Charles and Sammy just kept nodding. Lizzie was like that. Once she got an idea, she couldn't think uh, or talk about anything else. But once they got to school, Charles forgot all about Lizzie's idea. idea during morning meeting. Mr. Mason reminded Class 2B that it was meet the author day. Mary Thompson would be in the library reading to each class in turn. I'd like to I'd like you to think of some questions to ask her, Miss Mr Mason told the class. It's not every day that we get to talk to a real live author. He had put some of Mary Thompson's book, books out on display. Charles could hardly wait until it was his turn to share news. Guess that came to stay with this weekend, he asked when Mr. Mason called on him. He pointed to the copy of so many puppies. Mr. Mason had out, put out puppies, and they looked just like those. He fumbled in his backpack and pulled out a sign Lizzie and Maria made. See? He asked, passing it around to everybody, said, Aww. When they saw the puppies, Charles told about how the puppies had ended up at their house and what their names were and what their names and personalities were. Are they going to live with you forever? Mr. Mason asked. Charles shook his head. No, he said sadly. I wish he could keep one, but we're just fostering them. They all need good homes. 
All the morning, Charles kept glancing at the cover of so many puppies. He couldn't wait to hear Mary Thompson read it out loud. Finally, after lunch, it was his class's turn to go down to the library. Mom was right. Mary Thompson didn't act like a famous person. She was short and round and cozy looking with gray hair and a bright red scarf around her neck. She sat on the floor and invited everybody to sit in a circle with her. Then she read two of her books out loud, showing the pictures and stopping to ask questions like, does anybody have a younger brother or sister? And what kind of animal do you think Susie saw? Do you think Susie saw? Charles was sort of disappointed that she didn't read so many puppies, but he liked the book books she did read. Then it was question time. Where do you get your ideas? Asked Sin. Simon. Simon, I guess. How many books have you written? Asked Lucy. Do you draw the pictures in your books? Asked Robert. Do you like dinosaurs? Asked Sammy. Mary Thompson answered all the questions. Then Miss Mrs. Divine, the librarian, said there was only time for one more. Charles raised his hand. And Mary Thompson called on him. Which book of yours is your favorite? Asked Charles. My favorite is So Many Puppies. He was dying to tell Miss to tell Mary Thompson that Coco, Cinnamon, and Buddy. But he knew that wasn't time. There wasn't time. Oh, I love that one too, said Mary Thompson. I adore puppies, even though I haven't had one for many, many years. But I wrote that book a long time ago. Usually, whatever book I'm working on right now is my favorite. The bell rang just then, and Mr. Mason told the class to thank Miss Mary Top Thompson. Then it was time to go. Charles waited until everybody else had left. Then. He went up to Mary Thompson, just like Lizzie. He had an idea. He was almost too shy to ask, but the author seemed so nice. What did he have to lose? He stood there for a moment, not sure what to say. Mary Thompson smiled at him and raised her eyebrows like she was waiting for Charles to speak. Charles smiled shyly back at her. Would you like to come to a party, he asked. Chapter 9. Welcome to our party, Lizzie said to a woman with a little boy. Lizzie was greeting people at the bookstore door. Would you like a balloon? She handed the boy a red balloon with a picture of a dog on it. There's cookies and punch in the children's section. section. And later... On Mary Thompson will be reading and signing her books. Lizzie, Lizzie's great idea had come to life. Three weeks worth of planning had paid off. It was obviously ob obvious already that the Lucky Dog Party was going to be an event to remember. Everybody had helped with planning. Miss Dobbins and Julie from the shelter, Dr. Gibson, Jerry Small, and even Mary Thompson had been meeting at the Peterson's house, and they had worked out every detail of the party. Lizzie couldn't believe Charles had gotten the author, author to help out. Having Mary Thompson at the party was going to be bring lots of people to the bookstore and she was a lot of fun when they had their meetings mary always wanted to get to the business part 
out of the way first so they could move on to playing with the puppies. Buddy was getting stronger every day. And all the puppies were growing up fast. Cinnamon could already sit on command. And Coco was learning to walk on a leash. All three puppies were eating solid food. They were just about ready for adoption. Lizzie and Charles tried not to think about that too much. Dad and had been spending hours on the, at the computer making a mix CD for the party. He loved finding just the right song for any occasions. And Mom had gotten an article into the Littleton News that about the events, public, public city. She had said, that's the key. It must have worked because people had been streaming into Lucky Dog Books ever since the party had started. You ain't nothing but a hand dog was blaring over the, the sound system. Lizzie and Maria were taking their turn as official greeters. Are you interested in adopting a puppy or a dog? Maria asked the woman and the boy Lizzie had greeted. If you adopt today, you get three free vet visits, plus a book about a dog training and care. We'll definitely take a look, said the woman. She smiled down at her son Jasper, who has been wishing for a dog ever since. He was two years old. I know exactly how he feels, said Lizzie, giving Jasper a big wink. Have fun. Just then, Charles and Sammy came running over. We just put up three more yellow stickers, Charles said. Great news. Great news, Lizzie answered. Our system is really working. She almost hated to admit it, but it was true. At the very first planning meeting, Miss Dobbins had said, they could not have all of the dogs from the shelter at the bookstore too crazy, she said. They're, they'll be barking and running around and stealing food. Nobody in their, their right minds would adopt a dog who was acting like that. Lizzie was disappointed until Julie came up with the greatest idea. That poster you and your friends made for the puppies is terrific, she had said to Lizzie. If you can make a poster for each dog from the shelter, we can put them up at the bookstore that day. People will get to see what the dogs look like and read about them. Great idea, said Miss Dobbins. Miss Dobbins had said, but there's one big problem. There's no way we can let people adopt dogs just from a poster. They really have to meet the dogs. You're right, said Julie. I've been thinking about that. I think I've come up with a fun idea. We can have three different stickers on the poster. One can say adopt me. Another can say, someone's interested in me. And the last one can say, I found a home. The shelter is only a five-minute walk from the bookstore. If people want to meet, go meet the dogs. They can now. They can. Now the posters were up. Maria and Lizzie had made the best ones ever. And the party was in full swing. So far, there were four red. I'm a lucky dog. I found a home. Stickers on the poster hanging all around the bookstore. Those dogs are already adopted. Adopted. Uh, those dogs are, were already adopted. Lizzie knew she was going to miss walking them at Caring Paws. 
but she was ha happy to know that they had found forever families. Charles and Sammy offered to be greeters for a while. So Lizzie and Maria took a walk around the bookstore. There were people reading all signs and looking at the bookstore books for sale too. Dad's CD was playing. How much is that doggy in the window? Which meant that the bean was helping out at the DJ booth. That his that was his favorite song lately. Mom was roaming around with her reporter's notebook. Dr. Gibson was handing out pamphlets about how to keep your dog healthy. Julie and Miss Dobbins were taking turns over at the animal shelter introducing dogs to their possible new families. Cool, said Lizzie, pointing to one of the posters. Somebody's inter interested in Tigger. There was a yellow someone's interested in me. Today might be my lucky day. Sticker on Tigger's picture. Great, said Maria. Hey, let's go visit the puppies. Skipper, Skipper and her pups were the only real dogs allowed at the party. Jerry Small had set up a pen, pen for them. In the corner near the bookstore's cash register, he and Miss Mary Thompson were visiting with the puppies. Then, when Lizzie and Maria walked up, who's a little Cocoa Puff? cooed Mary Thompson, reaching to pet Coco. Hey there, Mr. Buddy, said Jerry, picking up the tan puppy. You have grown, he added, holding the squirmy puppy close. You're a big boy now. Cinnamon gave a short bark, asking for the same attention her brother and her sister were getting. Pick me up! Pick me up! Cinnamon wanted a hug. Coco licked the nice lady's hand. Yummy! Buddy felt safe in the big man's arms. But where was Lizzie and Charles and her mom and their mom? He missed them all. Skipper watched her puppies proudly. They were growing up so well. It was good that they liked to be around people since she couldn't take care of them forever. Soon they would be in their own. Hey, what's this? Maria asked. Lizzie's face fell when she saw the red. I found the home sticker on the puppy's pen. All, all the puppies have been adopted, she blurred out, blurted. No, somehow she had never expected this. She knew her family was only fostering the puppies, but she still wasn't prepared to see them go to their real homes, real homes. I thought you'd be glad, said Mary Thompson, glad for Coco and Cinnamon and glad for me. She picked up cinnamon and cuddled both puppies together next to her smiling round face. You mean, Lizzie stared at her. Mary Thompson nodded. I'm taking both these girls, she said. I fell in love with them. Plus, it's time to write a sequel to so many puppies. Everybody always tells me how much they love that book. Now Coco and Cinnamon can star in another story. And I'm taking Buddy, said Jerry Small. A place called Lucky Dog Books needs a dog. So this little guy will grow up here and be my mascot. Wow! Was this was all Lizzie could say. This was good news. No, it was great news. All three puppies had found excellent homes. So, why did she feel like crying? Chapter 10. I don't know how, why I feel so sad when the party was so much fun, Mom said. I'm sad too, said Charles. 
I know what you mean, said Dad. I'm I sad, said the bean with a loud wail. Lizzie sniffed and wiped her eyes. The lucky dog party was over and the Petersons were home alone. For that what seemed like the first time in weeks. The party had been a huge success. At least seven dogs had found homes. The puppies at had found homes too, which was probably the why the Petersons looked so miserable, even though they were pretending to celebrate with ginger ale and pizza. They sat at the kitchen. They sat in the kitchen, watching all three puppies romp around together for one of the last times. They would be gone, going to their new homes in a few days. In a few days, today was Saturday. On Wednesday, the puppies would get some last checkup from Doctor Gibson unless something changes. She had to. She had told Lizzie the pups should be ready to go to their new homes that day. The puppies were being as fun, funny as always. Coco. Was nosing toward the puppy dish, already to climb inside. Cinnamon walked right over her sister in search of the puppy's new favorite toy, a rubber chicken. Buddy let out a ferocious puppy growl as he pretended to fight for the chicken, tugging it away from Cinnamon. The boy puppy was still smaller than his sister's, but now he was strong and healthy. Ooh, look! Coco found the crumb of hidden food. Yummy! Cinnamon growled back at Buddy. Hey, give me that chicken! No, it's mine! Buddy let his sister know that she couldn't have the chicken all to herself. She couldn't bully him around any more. Hey, you! Mom said to Buddy as she picked him up to give him a hug. Leave your poor sister alone. And nuzzled her nose into Buddy's neck. Then Lizzie heard her sniff. "Mom," Lizzie said, "you're crying." "Am not," Mom answered. "Maybe I just became allergic to dogs." But Lizzie and Charles knew the truth. Mom had fallen in love with all the puppies, just like they they had, and of all the puppies, everyone. In the Petersons family, loved Buddy best. Maybe it was because he needed their help most of all. Maybe it was because he was so small and cute. Whatever it was, the Petersons were going to have a very, very hard time to say goodbye to Buddy. Over the next few days, the Petersons spent as much time as they could with the puppies. Mom kept feeding Buddy. By hand, even though he finally got strong enough to push his sisters aside when he was hungry, Lizzie and Ma, Lizzie and Maria, took dozens of pictures of the puppies for a scrapbook they were making. Dad brought home new pup、uh, home new puppy collars. For each of them, red for Cinnamon, purple for Coco, green for Buddy, and Charles had and Sammy played with the puppies for hours, trying to teach them manners for their new homes. Wednesday arrived all too soon. After dinner, Doctor Gibson was the first to arrive. She got right down to, on the kitchen floor and played with the puppies while she checked them over. These are the healthiest puppies I've ever seen," she said after a few minutes. Even the little guy is in great shape now. She took off her stethoscope. I'd say they're ready to go," she said. "Looks like their mom thinks so too." It was true that Skipper had become less and less patient with the puppies. She still cuddled with them. When they were sleepy, but she didn't put up with their play biting or baby baby growls. She let them know 
that she deserved respect, battling them away with her paw. When they got too rough, Jerry Small and Mary Thompson arrived next. Where are those sweet girls? Mary said, coming into the kitchen. Oh, you cuties, I can't wait to take you home. She sat down on the floor and pulled cinnamon and cocoa into her lap. Jerry Small looked uncomfortable. Lizzie wondered why he was, wasn't was picking Buddy up. Lizzie, listen, he said to the Petersons. I have good news and bad news. Well, tell us the good news first, said Dad. Business is booming, reported Jerry with a big smile. Look, Lucky Dog Books had has been incredibly busy all week. Our grand opening party really did that trick. The trick. Now everybody knows I'm there. So what's the bad news? Asked Charles. I held. He held his breath. Could it really be that he hoped it would be? Well, said Jerry. I guess the bad news is that I think the store is too busy for such a young puppy. I'm afraid that Buddy wouldn't get the attention he deserves. So, you're not going to have a dog at the bookstore? After all, Lizzie asked. She saw Jerry and Mary exchange a look. He'd still like to have a dog. I'd still like, still like to have a dog, Jerry said. I was wondering if I could adopt Skipper. I think she'd love it. At the store, he bent to pat Skipper's ear. What do you think, girl? Want to come to be a bookstore dog? Skipper thumped her tail. I think that means yes, said Dad. That's wonderful news. What Jerry, of course, Skipper needs a home too. And I'm sure she would love to be a bookstore dog. But what about Buddy? Jerry asked. Look, now Lizzie saw her mother and father exchange a look. She crossed her fingers. Mom gave a tiny nod. I think Buddy has already found a home, she said, Mom, right here with us. She went to scoop the tan puppy and give him a hug. Dad put one arm around her shoulders and reached the other hand around to tickle Buddy under the chin. Lizzie and Charles whooped. Finally, we have a puppy of our own, yelled Charles. Buddy, 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 chanted the bean, dancing around the kitchen. You're going to stay right here with fuss, Lizzie told Buddy. She reached out to touch the heart on his chest, smiling and crying at the same time. Buddy looked from one happy face to the other. What was everybody so excited about? He had known it all along. He belonged here in this house with this family. Buddy had found the perfect forever home. The end, guys. So, guys, we just finished, Buddy. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment below. all below. Bye! Have a great day, guys.